Thank you for joining us for the Conform to Christ podcast, where we seek to engage the mind, affect the heart, and call people to follow Christ. I'm Jay Jones, and I'm here with George Mays, and it's Free For All Friday. Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? Uh, it's going all right. Good. Feeling so. better than I did on Monday. Yeah. So That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as we talked about earlier, I hopefully won't start sneezing. Okay. Because when I do, I cannot stop. Yeah. It's like 10. I'm glad that you're, I'm glad I'm not the only one. I'm glad that you said that on the podcast so that my wife can hear that. Yeah. Because she makes fun of me for, <clears throat> I, I never sneeze just once. It's, it's always at least three or four. Yeah. Yeah. Usually more. Yeah. In, in, in spurts of two or three. And then it goes on for a couple minutes, and it's violent too. Is it? A, is it a good yeah. dad sneeze? It's violent. Yeah. Yep. You guys know what a I, dad sneeze is. Like I don't have to explain that to anybody. Yeah. Like if you know it, you know what a dad sneeze is. Yeah. Like oh it, yeah. It shakes the house. Mm-hmm. I was yep. telling you, I've I've uh, started having to brace myself when I sneeze because yeah. I'm afraid I'm going to throw <laughs> my back out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm like I have to I have to do like a Samson lead me to the pillars. <laughs> it's like a push against them before I sneeze. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um I would think it was impossible to sneeze one time except for I've seen it. Mm. Yeah. Brooke sneezes, she can sneeze like one time. Yeah. It's like a little mouse sneeze. Mm-hmm. And then that, then it's it. Yeah. I'm like how is this possible? Yeah, I don't know. Did you know you cannot sneeze with your eyes open? Can't be done. I'm pretty sure that's that's like a law, like gravity. Yeah. Is it like a um is it like a automatic mechanism I so think you so. don't so you don't like uh, so your eyeballs don't mm-hmm. pop out or something? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> This is the this is the That'll be a dead qu- giveaway. This is, the, this is the quality content that people That'll be a dead giveaway when they start uh making like uh, AI human androids. They'll forget something small, George, like blinking when you sneeze and then we'll know. I I gotta find this now. You're gonna have to fill up the <laughs> You're gonna have to fill up the space while I look <laughs> what, for this. <laughs> what what are you looking for now? I wish I you just you just bring up stuff and I I just have to I gotta see if I can find this real quick. <laughs> I'm sorry you you brought up AI and uh, I came across something that I thought was funny and okay. Uh, I may have already sent it to you. I just cannot remember. Yeah, it's hard to remember what I. Oh, uh, uh, here it is. Okay, let me let me see if I can. I gotta. I well, gotta, while he's looking share, that up, I gotta share this to. We're gonna talk about the he gets us stuff today. That, if you're wondering, what's this free for all Friday? We're gonna talk about the he gets us. <laughs> no uh, one's wondering that right now. <laughs> uh, you got it. I gotta send it to. I gotta send it to myself. Okay. Is it a video? No, it's a. <laughs> so we've been uh, behind the off. Off the recording, we've been talking about Marcus Pittman. Uh. <laughs> uh, Marcus Pittman is connected to the Moscow yeah. crew up there with uh, with Doug Wilson, and uh, he is a. I always thought he was a like, like a, at Apologia. Where's he at? Maybe, maybe he maybe he was at Apologia. Maybe works for both. I'm pretty sure he mo- no. I'm pretty sure he moved up to Moscow. He okay. might have started. He might have started down there, but I'm pretty sure he moved up to mm. to Moscow. I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm like 99 percent sure. Huh. Um, Do I need to turn the volume uh, up or anything? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, but he um he does like entertainment stuff. He, yeah. He's big in like like media mm-hmm. stuff. He's got um like a like a post mill th- theonomic uh, Netflix uh company that he's trying to get off the ground Uh. but he's become kind of a uh go-to source of entertainment for me (laughs) (laughs) 
because he just says so he just posts the wildest things sometimes and you just saying you just talking about ai mm. uh it reminded me of this this post from him uh from last week i think it was mm. uh if you want to throw it up on the screen we can look at it he said one time i asked jason farley that's the jason farley that blames transgenderism on baptist by the way uh, one time I asked Jason Farley what happened to Kanye West, that he fought so hard against sexualizing his, of his wife, and now he's posting nudity on his Instagram. Jason, without hesitation, said, quote, he warned us they were going to replace him, and that keeps me up at night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. He did warn they are going to replace me. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that's, a whole, here, that's a whole conspiracy. And of... here you go. Here's Here's a comment. Here's a comment before you go any further. <laughs> Here's some comments. This person said, so is this uh, an alternate Kanye kind of like Wario? Uh, this guy responded, he took the mark of the beast, the chip of Elon, he gone. <laughs> and then Mar- and then Marcus Pittman says, it's a mix of AI and body doubles. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. So the, chi- the chip, I guess, the uh, <clears throat> Neuralink, mm-hmm. they're saying the mark of the beast, as they're saying. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's yeah, what probably. I'm, I'm taking from that. Yeah, probably. Yeah, hmm. I can't imagine wanting to be hooked up to. I think they just did that. a test recently did they? on it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can't imagine wanting something implanted in my brain. Mm-hmm. No thanks. Yeah, especially knowing it, anything that's electronic is going to be hackable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. EMP goes off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't move the left side of my body. Isn't it interesting, like, when an EMP goes, like, does it not mess with brain function? Yeah. Your brain is electrical. Mm. Just random thoughts. <laughs> random thoughts. That's how you know all, if, if I've been replaced is uh, they won't program in good, like, completely random thoughts. That'll be the dead giveaway. Yeah. I'll keep an eye out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, shall we jump into it? Sure. He gets us campaign. So <clears throat> the uh, Super Bowl had 127 million uh, viewers on all, I guess, all media platforms, I think. Or it could have been that it was just the telecast. Okay. So there are possibly more through other streaming stuff. I, I'm not sure, but the most, the, the most watched in history telecast, which makes, I think, this somewhat important. I don't say it's like super duper important, but it kind of is considering the amount of viewers. <coughs> yeah, I wonder. That, that I wonder. Watched it. Yeah, I wonder if that's if that's every everything. Yeah, yeah. Roland was watching it on Univision. Huh. I walked in. I was like, "Why is the volume off?" It's on Spanish. <laughs> he couldn't. He couldn't get. Uh, couldn't get. What was it? CBS. Uh huh. Couldn't get CBS to work. Uh-oh, like, in he, he get, he get, he get yeah, work. Oh, in the snowstorm. He could get Univision. Yeah, we had that massive snowstorm. Yep. Well, the he gets has been around for a while. I feel like we've maybe talked about it. We have talked about it. We've shown some of their. Uh, I think it might have been last year. Uh-huh. It might have been last year that we, because uh, this is this is not the first time that they put out ads during the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, so we we have talked about it and showed some of their ads. Yeah. Yeah. But they have a lot of money. They've raised a a bunch. Um, I think a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot. And there was a time, I think, when they were like linked in with the SBC, but there was some pushback because of the churches that they recommend. Like if you go to He Gets mm-hmm. Us and then they recommend you to a church, yep. the churches there were, some of them, not orthodox. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I guarantee that the SBC is still... Probably. Is still somehow <clears throat> given money. Yeah. the I guess the the big donor for this ad campaign, at least is uh, one of the co-founders of Hobby Lobby. Mm. His son is on the board, I think, for He Gets Us. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, what do you think the goal is of the He Gets Us? <clears throat> um, we don't have to guess because uh, you can go to their website and they tell us. Okay. You got it? What do you want to do first? Do you want to talk about the group or you want to watch the uh <clears throat> want to watch the video? I've got the video in case anyone missed it. It's out there. I mean, we're we're not talking about something that uh no one else is talking about. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, er- yeah. Everybody's talking about this. Yeah. <clears throat> 
that, yeah, that's kind of why we're not doing our most uh, misunderstood verses. We'll return to that next week, but since, yeah, every, since everyone's talking about yeah. it, we might as well. Ah, let's watch the video. It's only a minute long. Okay. But this, I, I think they had two, yeah, but I this was this was the first one I saw. It's, uh, well, yeah, I, don't it, I mean, it explains itself. I'm not even sure what the second one was. I, I don't think I saw it. I don't remember. This is one. the this is the one. This is that, the one. This is the one everyone's talking about. Okay. Yeah, this is the one everyone's talking about. All right, about. let's 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 watch it then. All right, here we go. Don't ask me what you know is true. Don't have to tell you. So there was the uh, there was the commercial. Yeah, so I, I think most of the uh, discussion has really been around maybe maybe two or maybe one. I don't know. Um, let's see if I can. There it is. Okay, this is the. Uh, oops. Yeah that that's the one the fir- this one right here this is the. Uh, Looks like a. Uh, <clears throat> that's that's the one that uh, is the, yeah. the most controversial because you've got. Um, it's at abortion clinic. It's an abortion you've clinic. You got some protesters over here, right? So if you're not watching, uh, it's an abortion clinic. Mm. There's a guest and a a lady who's inquiring about an abortion, be, having her feet washed by a woman, another woman that looks like a. Uh, suburban, maybe, uh, lady. And then you have, next to the clinic, you've got your protesters. Um, yeah. So, I think that what they're communica- what they're trying to communicate is, c- given what they say at the end, Jesus didn't teach hate. Mm-hmm. Jesus washed feet. Right. So, implied then, I think, <coughs> or more than implied, is that the people who are at the clinics that are doing the protesting as as they're shown to be doing mm-hmm. um are the ones that are preaching hate the lady washing the feet this is how christians should be ministering to people who are inquiring about abortions they should be washing their feet like right. ministering to them right um here is a uh here's a, a tweet from he gets us this uh this came out yesterday uh, at his final meal, Jesus got his friends and foes together and washed their feet as a symbolic example of how they should humble themselves while dignifying and valuing others. What would that look like today? Yeah. Um, it's a lot of, lot to unpack there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll jump into, I think we should jump into the events of the Bible and try to understand what's going on there so yeah, we can yeah. understand that, but... I think you get based off of that one at the abortion clinic that you see. This is less than honest, I think, and, and also there's some. Uh, I think it's just it, it's bad. It's like it's harmful because most of the people that go to abortion clinics are there to minister to those ladies. Mm-hmm. Right? They're there to offer them adoption most of the time that mm-hmm. they'll adopt their baby if they don't. If they decide, like, hey, don't kill your baby, I'll adopt your baby. I would say that's loving your neighbor pretty good. Um, a lot of times, total strangers will offer uh, finance finance help through churches to, like, take care of the material needs of this person, give them everything they need to have a baby, uh, so they'll have their baby. Right? They're, they're, they're there ministering. 
they're but they're also there to tell them not to murder their baby. And and so the problem here with this image as presented is it completely undoes all of that and just simply says if you're there at the clinic to warn people about what they're about to do, just kill their child and call them not to do that and then you're preaching hate. You're a preacher of hate. Um, that's really bad. It's, I think it's dishonest. And, um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so. there's uh, there's been questions about who's behind these ad campaigns because there's uh, you've got stuff like that. Um, and uh, the... They are saying like, no, we're we're apolitical, right? We're apolitical. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can be apolitical, right? Yeah. Like I, I, I think that's like a cheap cop out that doesn't uh-huh. actually work, right? Like you, you're, you, you can't, you can't do that. Uh, anyway, they, uh, the, they've got uh, what? <laughs> it's interesting. It, you can go to you can go to their website and uh, go here. He gets us has an agenda. All right, <clears throat> it's kind of long. I don't. I, I won't read all of it. Uh, how did the story of a man who taught and practiced unconditional love become associated with hatred and oppression for so many people? Uh, I mean, right there, they're 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 spinning a liberal talking point. Sure, right. Um. The more ideologically defensive we become, the more we are willing to sacrifice things like kindness, patience, and the respect and dignity of others for the sake of victory. Uh, Many have relegated Jesus from the world's greatest love story to just another tactic used to intensify our deep cultural divisions. Um, Throughout our shared history, Jesus has represented the ultimate good that humankind is capable of aspiring to. And that's, that's a problem right here. Yes, <laughs> for sure. There's a real problem right there. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, our agenda is to rediscover the love story of Jesus, Christians, non-Christians, and everybody in between, all of us. I don't know what everybody in between is. I mean, Christian and non-Christian. Like, right, or, yeah. One or the other. Um, we look at the biography of Jesus uh-huh. through a, a modern lens to find new relevance uh, and often overlook moments and themes from his life. Um, like that's like that, that's, that's liberal, <laughs> that's right. liberal theology that we look at the biography of Jesus yeah, through a modern lens, uh-huh. new relevance. That's, those are all, those are all like red flags, but here we got, uh, we've got who they are. It says he gets us is a diverse group of Jesus followers with a wide variety of faith journeys and lived experiences. Our work represents the input from Christians who believe that Jesus is the son of God, as well as many others who, though not Christians, share a deep admiration for the man that Jesus was. And we are deeply, and we are deeply inspired and curious to explore his story. Yeah. Problem. Obviously. (laughs) (laughs) That's a problem. Yeah. Can you go back to the very first one where you say something about the how do people come to a hate hatred? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. How, how did the story, the story of a man who taught a practice unconditional love become associated with hatred and oppression for so many people? I mean, before Jesus ever was crucified, he told his disciples uh, in John fifteen, "If the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you." Right. So I would say, that whenever, however it happened, it happened pretty early, George. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's, it's not, not it's not. So it's the world hating Jesus. Uh-huh. It's it's the I mean this goes all the way back to Genesis three. Uh-huh. <laughs> the it's it's not God hating humanity. It's humanity hating God. Psalm two tells us that the nations are raging against Yahweh and against His anointed one, against His Messiah, uh-huh. and uh, they so they hate Him. And uh, last night at our uh, our Wednesday night Bible study, we were studying Psalm eighty three. And it's it's talking about it, it's using language from Psalm two to talk about the nations are raging and they're conspiring against God's treasured ones, against His people, to destroy them, to annihilate them, to wipe them off the face of the planet. And so they, the world hates God, and so it hates God's people. But it twists it twists it so that 
uh, the world comes off looking like the hero and the Christians are the bad guys who are expressing right. hate when actually the Bible tells us it's the world that hates Christians. They hate what Christians say. Mm -hmm. And so they, they, just, they just flip it and say, you guys are the bigots. Right. Now there are there are people that that masquerade as Christians that um, that they are characterized by hate. Um, you can think of like the Westboro Baptist, uh -huh. which I haven't heard I haven't heard about them in yeah, me either. years and years and years. I'm sure they're still around, but so there there are there are those who are going to claim the name of of Christ who are not actually followers. But that's also not something that's new, right? But um, to to just lump all of Christianity and say, look, the world just thinks that we're we're just hateful and judgmental. Yeah, it, yeah, right. like that's like Jesus told us that that's what we should expect. They're right. they're going to because they hate him. They're they're not going to want his his disciples to yeah proclaim the message. So they present this as like a uh, it's like they're running a PR campaign to like rebrand. Mm -hmm. It's like a rebrand Jesus, and the kind of the reason they give it is what they're implying is that somehow in America over the, maybe the past fifty years, um, Jesus became associated with hate hatred, mm -hmm. and so this campaign is an effort to rebrand and say, no, look, he gets us. He washed people's feet, mm -hmm. uh, his enemies, even, and all of this, and so in doing that. What I find mind-boggling about this whole thing is, <clears throat> you know, where we're going to be Sunday is Romans 1, 16 through 17, where Paul says he's not ashamed of the gospel. Then he gives a reason. reason is because it's the power of God is salvation. Why is it the power of God? For in it the righteousness of God is revealed. It's, it's tightly linked together, the thought, but he's not ashamed of the gospel because he believes it's the power of God. And if you really understand what that means, like God's power is himself, mm. right? It's his, everything that his power is, he is. Like, you can't separate the two. So you're talking infinite divine power in the gospel, <clears throat> operating in the world for real. That's Paul's view. He, 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 he has a supernatural view of when the plain message of the gospel is communicated to either the human ear or through the reading of it, that there is divine, actual, supernatural, infinite power at work. And so he's not ashamed. And here's my deduction. The whole He Gets Us campaign is ashamed of the gospel. Mm. Because in that 30-second clip, or however long it was, they had enough time to share the gospel. They had the money and the means to share the gospel with 127 million people at one time. And it was in a prime spot in the Super Bowl when everyone was tuned in. And they did not do it because they do not believe the gospel is the power of God and they're ashamed of the message. There's my summation of he gets us. Yeah. They should repent in dust and ashes. Uh, that was yesterday, Jay. Yeah, they missed their, their chance. They missed their Maybe choice. they can go to Wahlburgers and hang out with uh, <laughs> Wahlberg and show everyone their, their repentance. Yeah. Well, I mean, their whole thing, I mean, it's over and over and over again just on this one page. How did the story of a man who taught and practiced unconditional love peace and kindness who spent his life defending the poor and the marginalized the man who even forgave his killers while they executed him unjustly whose life inspired a radical movement that is still impacting the world thousands of years later how did that man's story become associated with hatred and oppression for so many people um like it's all about unconditional love unconditional right, right. love unconditional love there's no there's no judgment there's nothing that you know um how how did his how did how did this get associated with hatred right. and, and the problem is that they're they are reinterpreting what jesus's message was which shouldn't surprise us uh here's one of the people that uh that works on the the he gets us account um and you'll notice that uh so right right here working on the he gets us account uh, he's uh, she's a fierce uh, she has a fierce passion for all things d e and i yeah uh, which is uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is just another word for progressive wokeness. Right. Um, you can't even, you can't find her, uh, you can't find, you can't view her stuff on Twitter anymore, like she's here. And it's probably because she, uh, oops, it's probably because a couple of days ago she 
uh, liked a uh, pretty gross uh, anti-Israel. Uh, of course. <laughs> <tweet. Yeah. laughs> so now her uh, now you can't you can't go into her Twitter. You can't uh-huh. see her stuff. Yeah. So I mean that's it. Just think about the wasted opportunity. Just think the mm. like what they could have done. Right. Yeah. But instead they used it to like slander Jesus followers. Yeah. But um you've got a lot of um professing Christians who are defending it. Who are defending the the commercial. Uh-huh. Uh I came across uh, a couple that we can look at. Uh well the first is from Michael Knowles. Uh-huh. Uh he works for uh for the Daily Wire. He's got his own own show. Uh-huh. Um, he's, uh, we, we, you think he's Catholic? I think so. Okay. Uh, he put, he posted, am I the only conservative Christian who didn't totally hate the, he gets us ad? Yes, it speaks wokies. It's not for us. It's for secular libs. There's a risk. It leads to heretical complacency, but if it gets some lost lib, even to consider our Lord, I'm not totally opposed. And then down here he says, your green-haired lesbian cousin who hates her dad is not going to read the Summa Theologia <laughs> Theologia that you didn't buy her. But if she begins to feel even a slight affection for our Lord, she might turn on a podcast. And here's the uh, here's the kicker right here. Maybe that podcast could be Fire Mike Schmidt's Bible in a year. Um, so here's here's one of the problems of of the uh, apologetics for well at least at least it's getting out. It's, it's a, at least people are hearing the name of Jesus. Mm. Um, which Jesus? Like, who are they being directed to? Mm. Because we've said on here many, many times that um, the Jesus of Roman Catholicism is not the true Jesus. Right. And so you've got Michael Knowles, a conservative, you know, quote unquote Christian, um, who is is hopeful that maybe this commercial will get people to consider Catholicism. Mm. That's that's a problem. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, mm. We got Dallas Jenkins. Here's a tweet from Dallas Jenkins. Surprise, surprise. Oh, Dallas yeah. Jenkins, the creator of The Chosen, mm-hmm. is a fan of the He Gets Us ad. <laughs> if all the people criticizing the He Gets Us ads just pulled a little money together, they could finance and produce their own ad and try to get all their favorite characteristics of Jesus into 30 seconds, because heaven forbid we'd only talk about one for 30 seconds. Yeah. So. And like I said, 30 seconds is enough time to share the gospel, and then you don't have to, you know, you're not worrying about, like, the other things, like, oh, maybe they'll read, maybe they'll come onto some podcast, and, mm. you know, what Jesus, just give the gospel of of the of the Bible and believe that it's enough. Mm. Like, I, I, again, I can't, I can't fathom a group of Christians being in a room and having 30 seconds to share the gospel with, like, more people in the world at one time, maybe than ever right. in history of the world, mm-hmm. and going, let's use this to produce something that maybe would give someone who's a liberal some type of affection for Jesus, and then maybe one day they'll come. Like, they don't believe it. They don't believe what the Bible says about the gospel. They right. just do not. They don't believe it. Yeah, so the problem, uh, we're, we're going to turn to to John 13, I think, in just, just a second and look mm. at this. Um, but... Um, the the problem is it's it is reinforcing an unbeliever's uh, the worldview that they already are living under the assumption of mm-hmm. right? these right. Christians at the abortion clinic who are outside pleading with mothers not to go inside and kill their babies are hateful. Right. Jesus didn't teach hate; he washed feet. Right. Um, these Christians are homophobes mm-hmm. and uh trans you know transphobes and and don't uh, like immigrants they, they don't like immigrants and uh they're racist and Jesus didn't teach hate right yeah well it's funny that uh, Dallas right. Jenkins said it, that if uh Christians pulled money together they could make their own ad uh someone did 
oh, take. Yeah, yeah, someone did take. Someone yeah. did take uh, the uh, basic concept. They did yeah. of it, they, and uh, by himself made his own one minute yeah. ad. Was it? And it is far superior. <laughs> it is. It is. It is far superior. Is it in one? Uh, did he do it beforehand, and the, or was it response? I think he did it as a response. Huh. Yeah. Um, you want to watch it? Yeah, let's it's watch good. it. It's good. It's good. Don't ask me what you know is true. Don't have to tell you. I love your precious heart. I, I was standing. You were there. Yeah, that's good. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Much better. Much better. Much better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, much better. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as such were some of you. Mm-hmm. Um that's right. ca- that's really kind of I think the miss it, one of the missing pieces here mm-hmm. is people already really I think think that God God loves them. Yeah. And there are some who are have got you know, a lot, a lot of awareness that maybe they're under the judgment of God or some deity. They feel um, their conscience is at work in that way, which is good because it's a pathway to the gospel. But the majority of people really, I believe, think like God just loves everybody and mm. and loves everyone. I mean, that's kind of the justification, right? When you if you go down to an abortion clinic. They they kind of think they know what they're doing. By the way, if you've never gone to one, you you might have to leave our state to do it now. But go to another state and just go there, and and you'll see that their conscience is appeased because even though they know what they're about to do, they shouldn't do. They still think God understands their fine. Either it's their pressures that they have, uh, either financial or whatever, or sometimes just the inconvenience. Because there'll, there'll be people there that have like the dad waiting in the car with the other kids mm. in their middle class and driving a Mercedes, okay. right? They don't. They just don't want another kid. Mm. But it's they already think like, oh, God loves me, mm. and so I think one of the things that is really missed by people who are trying to like rebrand, and in doing so, they just continue to feed that idea. Is they never have the idea of a change that Jesus brings about change, like total transformation. That's what that second ad really captures. As such, were some of you, is it First Corinthians, yeah, six. six, right? He goes through a list of right sins describing the culture, describing our culture, Roman culture, all, our culture. Not a lot of difference. Yeah. Um, and then he says, as such, were some of you, meaning the people he's writing it to, used to be as that at that last ad. If you're not watching, you'll want to hop on and watch it. It was like former witch, former drug addict. Former gang leader, KKK, former KKK leader, a, a former abortionist, mm-hmm. a former lesbian activist, and then it says you know, he saves us, he washes us, regenerates us, transforms us. Yeah, the uh, the way that the he gets us campaign presents it is that he gets it and he understands what you you know who you are and he loves you regardless. Yeah. And there's there's a and what's so dangerous is that there is a a bit of truth in there, uh-huh. but it's not the whole truth. Right. Uh, so you you go on to the the he gets this um, Twitter and the, and the description of their their group is no matter who you are, where you're from. It's right over here in the, the right hand corner, or what you believe. We invite you to discover the world's greatest love story, the story of Jesus, mm-hmm. and it doesn't. It, it it doesn't get at the at the root problems, right? Uh, the the Bible. I mean, we're we're going to look at at John, and John tells us that Jesus does get us. 
Mm -hmm. And it says that now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, did not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to bear witness about man, for he himself knew what was in man. Mm-hmm. Like he does, he does get us. Right. <laughs> he does. He knows exactly what we are. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the rest of the Gospel of John is not just him showing unconditional love and and like no like a judgment free zone and just be who be whoever you are. Right. Um, it's him confronting the unbelief of the people and calling them to repent and trust in him. Right. Yeah, you can't take you can't take the the washing of the disciples' feet out he, of the context of the book of John. He even says, "I came not to call the righteous, but sinners." Mm. And so, a problem that we can have then is that people will never see themselves that way. Yeah, they they'll see themselves as righteous. I think most people see themselves as righteous. So Jesus says, "I came not to call the righteous, but sinners." So you have to see yourself as a sinner before you can before you can come. Yeah, right now. Don't confuse what we're saying. We are not saying that you have to go through like a full blown repentance of, you know, you were once a drug addict. Now you're not a drug addict, and therefore now you can come to Jesus. No, like the coming itself is an act of repentance, I I believe. Mm. But coming with that is that knowledge that you're a sinner, and here's a God in the flesh who serves sinners. Mm. But if and we have a picture of that before even the foot washing of the disciples, you have a picture uh, in John twelve, and then you also have the picture of that in in Luke. I think it's, I think it is Luke seven. Where's it at? Uh, yeah, uh, seven thirty six. Jesus is eating with one of the Pharisees in a Pharisee's house. Uh, so yes, Jesus, Jesus did dine with sinners. He also dined with Pharisees mm-hmm. because guess what? They're a different brand of sinner. Yeah. Right. And a woman comes in and kind of interrupts this deal. She falls at his feet and she washes his feet with his with her tears. That is the heart of really what's going on in the gospel. Not it's not that you come to Jesus as you always have been and always will be forever. It's that he transforms us. And his very presence, when you understand who he is, you become the one now who will wash his feet with your tears, and you'll be renewed. He forgives the woman at the end. He says, your faith has has healed you. Your sins are forgiven. Then they get into this whole thing. He can forgive sins. Like, who can forgive sins but God? Mm -hmm. That's what he tells a woman. Your sins are forgiven. All right. All right. Let's look at the—let's go back to this Twitter, uh, this tweet from He Gets Us, and then let's look at John 13, because— Okay. They're, they are misinterpreting the event. Yeah. <clears throat> are you surprised? No, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Uh, he gets this. Uh, it says, at his final meal, Jesus got his friends and foes together and washed their feet as a symbolic example of how they should humble themselves while dignifying and valuing others. Uh-huh. What would that look like today? All right, so he, it, it's his last meal. This is right. this is the upper room. This is the this is the last supper. Uh, he got his friends and foes together. Mm. Yeah, uh, that's the problem because <laughs> it should be yeah. it got he got his friends together, uh-huh. and one of them was a traitor. Right. He didn't he didn't bring his friends and foes together into the upper room. He brought his closest friends together. Mm. Not even all the disciples. His closest friends. Mm-hmm. He brought his closest friends together. He brought the 12. Among them was a betrayer. Right. Yeah. And he knew that. He uh-huh. knew that. And he did wash his feet anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He washed their feet as a symbolic example of how they should humble themselves. This is your reading he gets us? Yes. Okay. Let's throw it back up. All right. It's a, He washed their feet as a symbolic example of how they should humble themselves while dignifying and valuing others. Oh. Okay. <laughs> So there again, the, yeah. the problem is there is a there's a slight bit of truth there. Uh. This was a, it was symbolic of how they should humble and serve others, but it's not everything. It's right. not the entire story. It's not it's not everything that he's teaching. Mm-hmm. So let's 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 look at it. Let's read it and let's. Uh, let's you preach through the Gospel of John. Teach Indeed. us teach us the uh, the foot washing story. Okay, all right. You want to read it? Sure, yeah. 
Uh, this is John chapter 13. Uh, I would have pull. I would have had this ready to pull up on the screen if I would have known. Okay. Uh, you just have to listen. Okay. All right. Um, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Hang on. Who's that? <laughs> right. Hey, well, it's his friends and his foes. Jay. God, lo- God loves everybody the same the same way. <laughs> All right. The exact same way. Uh-huh. Uh huh. We see al- already there's a, there's a particular love mm. here that Jesus has for right. his own, and that has a wider meaning in John than mm. just the twelve, meaning all the people that have been given to him by the Father. But here in particular, in this instance, he's with the twelve, so his own there, the ones he's chosen out of the world, his particular love for them. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's our, already we see that there's a slight discrepancy in what the he gets us uh, at is, is telling us. All right, mm-hmm. there we go. I, I pulled it up for us. Um, it says that uh, during supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, the one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Mm. Yeah. So I think the first thing uh, we have to understand is what he did is he took the position of a, of a slave, mm-hmm. right? So J- Jews in this period, they wouldn't even wash each other's feet. Like, you're coming over to my house, I'm not going to wash your feet. Right? You wash your own feet. Yeah, because it's gross. But if you have a slave, <clears throat> um, which, good luck dealing with this, if you're uh, of the liberal inclination, uh, a slave would wash someone's feet, okay? Uh, so Jesus takes the form of a slave. Picture a picture of the incarnation, which is elaborated on in great detail by Paul's in Paul and Paul's theology, and that's that's uh, that's one of the issues with the he gets this campaign uh, with with this video is that our culture isn't even going to understand what foot washing mm-hmm. is, right? Because it it's not it's not the same for us. We don't walk everywhere on dirty, dusty roads in sandals, right? Uh, we don't we don't have mud caked to our feet, right? Um, it, it's not, it's not, it's not the same. Like it, it doesn't even, right. it's not even going to convey exactly what that means. Yeah. And so you, you get in that, it, you get in this, a picture of, um, our uncleanness. So your feet become a, a, a picture of your whole being, right? You walk through the world, your feet get dirty. Somebody's got to wash feet. You come in to eat. Um, usually done by yourself, but it gets a picture now. Here's a picture of you as a as a human, uh, tainted by the world, uh, fallen in sin, and unable to cleanse oneself. Uh, so Jesus takes the form of a slave, a picture of his incarnation and the his ministry of what he's doing here. Um, and he said he tells them, "You're not going to understand this till later." What's later? What would what would come later that would make them understand what has taken place? Right. And, of course, we know, you just keep reading in John, what happens is a crucifixion, that Christ, uh, he dies. 
a sacrificial death. Uh, his death is a propitiation where God's wrath is poured out upon him so that he can then swap places with the sinner. Mm. Right. So then our sins are put upon the sinless one, and then his perfection, his righteousness, is placed upon us, and that's a picture of our cleansing from sin. That's the later, which mm-hmm. will make them understand what's happening now. Right. So what he's doing to them now is a picture of what he's going to do in the cross. Mm-hmm. And that's why when Peter's like, you can't wash me, and, and that's why Jesus says, if I can't wash you, you have no part of me. Right. You, I have to. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a picture. that's a picture of what Christ has done for us. Uh, it's not just him reaching out and making people feel accepted at all. Mm-hmm. And so that's really the theology of the foot washing. Mm. And, the, and the humbling of himself becomes the... He's the prototype of what now he expects all of his followers to do for each other. This is tied into the teachings he'll give after Judas is gone. Judas leaves, and he then gives them very detailed instructions, and one of them is their love for one another. As I have loved you, you will love one another. By this, all people will know you're my disciples. That's misinterpreted by the world today. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah. Yeah, because he is not saying the world will know that you're my followers by your love for it's everybody. Right. It's by your love for each other. Uh-huh. Right. How Christians treat Christians. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's kind of what his teaching is, is... As I've done to you, you are to do to each other. He's not even telling them, wash feet. Some people have right. taken it that way. Yeah, it did not become a, an ordinance in the church like uh, baptism and, and the Lord's Supper. The Brethren movement have that, right? They still I do that. I think so. I think, I think maybe some free will Baptists might do it also. Yeah. Um, I don't know who else. I'm, I'm sure there, I'm sure there are, but... Um, throughout church history, it has not been a sacrament like mm-hmm. um, like baptism and the Lord's Supper. Right. Yeah. And so he's using this also to show them, um, if you would be great in the kingdom, then you must become like a slave. Mm-hmm. It's an upside-down kingdom. Right. The, the greatest in the kingdom are the servants. And so that's what he's teaching his disciples, right? It's kind of an important lesson if you think about it. Like they're they're the foundation of the church. Mm-hmm. Um, they're important. They're prestigious, right? But we don't see that type of prestigious attitude among them. They're servant. They followed after him mm-hmm. after their master and their their servants, right? Now, so the whole thing is the beauty of 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 it itself is also lost, right? There probably was a way in thirty seconds even to use the foot washing to then also share the gospel a legitimate way. And that was completely missed too. I mean, even the even the the better the better ad mm-hmm. didn't share the gospel um in its in its fullness. Mm-hmm. It's a minute. Right. But it does it does present a Jesus who isn't just going to love unconditionally no matter what no matter what you're you're doing mm-hmm. it does say that he saves us he right. saves us out of those things mm-hmm. like he doesn't he doesn't leave us in those things he right. he redeems us and and delivers us out of those things right so yes there's no um there's no you know penal substitutionary atonement there's no resurrection in even the better ad right um so yes it it's it's not it's not sufficient in itself. Well, I think the ad was a direct response one for one right. for the type of thing that was going on in the ad. Mm-hmm. I don't think that was was yeah. their goal. Right. So Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's it. That's the, uh, the foot I mean, washing. that's that's kind of a that's kind of a um a reminder to us that um like we don't have a thirty second gospel. Mm-hmm. Like we do have to explain the the message to people Mm -hmm. and especially in our um hostile culture that we live in where people you you can't even say god and and expect people to immediately think of the biblical god Mm -hmm. um we we just live in a a a non-christian 
society. Mm -hmm. And so we have to, I mean, it, it's like an unreached people group. Yes. They don't have, they don't have, they don't have the, they don't have the foundational knowledge. Mm -hmm. So we can't just, we can't just immediately jump into this stuff. We, we do, we have to build, we have to build up. We have to talk to people and and present the message. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can't assume anything. No. I mean, what is the Ice Spice who was by Taylor Swift at the Super Bowl and she was doing like weird witchcraft symbols and had an upside down cross on. You know, she accepted her award. Her, I, think, I don't know if it was a Grammy. Who or was it? it? Was. I think her name is Ice Spice. Ice Spice? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But in her like acceptance of the award, she thanked God. You um, know some random things. Yeah. Jay. I mean, I, I mean, it, it, you know, I never it's know. Super Bowl. I you never gotta, know. I never know what to. You got to pay attention to the Super Bowl. I guess. Who's sitting by who? Mm. Yeah. Who's who? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she was she was flashing weird weird oh, yeah. symbols. Uh huh. And had an upside down cross on. But you thank God at her acceptance. Oh deal. really? Yeah. Yeah. So mm. like like you're exactly right. Like. Yeah. What's people what's, have what's people have happening? a people have a God. Uh huh. They use yeah. that term, but they mm. they definitely don't mean what we mean when we say God. You're right. So, yeah. But we can't treat, we can't treat, um, again, going back to the ad and people's apologetic for it. Well, at least it's got people talking about, about Jesus. We don't use Jesus's name as some kind of talisman. Mm. Like yeah. that's, I mean, a lot of that's, that's, um, I mean, we're, I, guess. I, say, I think we're getting pretty close, if if not violating uh, the third commandment mm. uh, by doing that. I'm just saying, well, we just need to we just need to speak his name, and good things are going to happen. Right. Um, we we have to explain who is this Jesus. Right. Who is he? Um, yeah. What what makes him what makes him so special? Mm -hmm. And uh, if we're if we're I mean, you go onto the he gets us website and there's there's no gospel in, there's no the, gospel the anywhere website. no they they uh i mean they talk about his death but it's not like they don't talk about why his death is important um it, it's it is it's all about unconditional love mm -hmm. well who doesn't want unconditional love jay yeah everyone wants unconditional love right like love me no matter what i do right well yeah but so so uh, pretend there's... pretend the ad does impact you okay mm -hmm. You're like you you hear of Jesus, you hear of his unconditional love, and then you adopt that kind of worldview, and maybe even start calling yourself a Christian. Mm -hmm. And then you meet an actual Christian, who then tells you why he really died, and tells you that you're a sinner and that you need to repent. Mm -hmm. How do you think it's going to go? Um, I mean, if God, I mean. You want my? You want the Calvinist answer, Jay? <laughs> well, let's go with just like the. I mean, God, uh, let, let's let. I mean, can God use this ad? Yes. Will we have to undo the ad <laughs> from people that we talk to? Yes, we'll have to undo the stuff. Mm -hmm. um, because if you if you fully are embracing the no matter who you are, where you're from, or what you believe, uh, you have unconditional love. Um, then when someone tells you that you're a sinner and you need to repent, um, you're not going to, you're going to see that person as, as exactly what the, what the ad is speaking against. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus didn't teach hate. He only preached love. Mm -hmm. Well, go tell the Pharisees that after they heard him uh, talk in Matthew chapter 23 and he called them a brood of vipers. Right. Yeah. Um, what what's happening is that uh, this ad is going to reinforce the idea that well, uh, modern evangelicals are the Pharisees. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what's going on. Yeah. But God's love is not determined by our ideas of unconditional or unconditionalism. It's determined by His own nature. Mm. Right. So in the same Jesus, where we see loving sinners in countercultural ways even, right? The Pharisees would not associate with sinners for fear they'd be contaminated. Mm. Uh, 
Jesus associates with sinners because he contaminates them with his righteousness. Yeah. But we also see the flip side of, of, of the coin of Jesus' love when he absolutely ransacks the temple. Yeah, yeah. He, he loves God. He loves God. That's why he, that's why he came. He loves <laughs> right. his father. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to go back to the, to the website real quick because it, it just it strikes me again that our work represents the input from Christians who believe that Jesus is the Son of God, as well as many others who, though not Christian, share a deep admiration for the man that Jesus was, and we are deeply inspired and curious to explore his story. Who cares about the man Jesus' unconditional love? Who cares? Yeah. Like, you could show me unconditional love. Who cares? Right. The only reason that Jesus' love is so profound is because of who he is. Right. He's not just another man. Did they have he, anything he on, is, on this side about him not just being a man? About well, him being God in the flesh? Uh, I don't. Because if not, you, don't. you don't, you're not even presenting Jesus as yeah, who I mean, he is. I, yeah. Uh, I mean, you've. I don't know. I don't. I don't see anything like it's not. It's not out there, mm. right? Because Muslims have a deep admiration for Jesus. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they consider him a great prophet, yeah. and they re- and they like him a lot. Mm-hmm. Their version. Their version of him. Obviously, they don't believe he's God in the flesh. Um, so yeah, that's a problem. I mean, are are there Muslims working on the ad campaign too? <laughs> Who knows? You know, I don't know. Atheists, perhaps that are inspired by his. Uh, what they perceive as his as his love, and I guess don't read the rest of the Gospels with his interactions with anyone else. Yeah, who all is uh, I mean, putting it's, input it's, in? I mean, it, I mean, there's a lot of stuff about love, but I don't really see anything about who Jesus is. Like, his love doesn't matter to the world if he's just a man. Because yeah. that, who cares? Even if you go to the basic of John 3.16, uh, this, this is God's love, right? God so loved the world, how? Yeah. That he gave his only son. <laughs> right? You you can't even you can't even get to God's God's unconditional love or his love in any respect without understanding that God loves sinners like this. That he would send the eternal second person of the Trinity into the world as a human being. And, and not just a human being, he took the form of a slave, mm. a servant. Um so it's pretty shocking that there wouldn't be anything on there that would even give people the hint that Jesus is I mean, there's some hint, not just a man. There's some hints that he's different, but I'm not seeing anything that's like explicit. Yeah. It's like you have to read between the lines. Um again, we can't do that. <laughs> we right. can't we can't assume anything. There's some interesting uh things on here though, Jay. Four ways Jesus supported women's equality. Huh. Jesus was fed up with politics too. Jesus let his hair down too. Let let his hair down. Huh? He let his hair down. Huh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, it, again, there. I'm. There's good intentions. I'm sure. Jesus felt pressure to be a good example too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. Ob- obviously, uh, they have good intentions. We can grant them that. But again, just think about it. If we think about it in this in this context where we started, you have an opportunity, like never before, just to share the gospel. That's it. All right. Just believe what the Bible says about the gospel. All right. That it's God's power, and people the people you think could never be transformed by it, like the most hardened of heart secularized, maybe even atheist, can hear the gospel one time and be converted. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Because God loves sinners. Right. Jesus loves sinners. Mm -hmm. Uh, He loved them so much that he came and put on human flesh and walked among us, and he, he died. He died for us. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well... 
I don't think I have anything else to, to say. Jay, you, you got else? you got through it without sneezing. You didn't sneeze once, did you? No, it's because I said that uh, word beforehand. You told me what was it? I, I I'm pretty sure it's cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. I'm pretty sure when you feel like you're about to sneeze, if you say cantaloupe, yeah, like it it does like the like saying it it, it opens up your mm-hmm. your nostrils or something enough so that you don't. I don't cantaloupe. Know. I'm I'm pretty sure it's cantaloupe. There's there's probably there's probably all kinds it's of good life hack. Uh, old wife's tales about how to stop sneeze. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in today. It was uh, our joy to, to be with you for a little bit. If this podcast has been a blessing to you, uh, please give us a like, subscribe, or share. You can download our app now as well from uh, Christ Fellowship Church and the App Store, uh, or any of the App Stores, really. Um, Come back next week. We're jumping into the end of Romans, and then we'll probably be back into the most abused Bible verses for the next Free For All Friday. I'm sure something crazy will happen between now and then. When's the SBC thing? It's, it's in the summer. Okay. we got some time. So maybe we can finish those verses. All right. Y'all have a good weekend. We'll see you next week.